Hi, this is Shadi and we have an important topic to discuss today and that is the proper training of martial arts when it comes to street safety, self-defense, special force, everything that has to do with street safety is very important to discuss because of the recent event that has happened. Now, I know a lot of people, you know, they're putting stuff online, they're trying to show how chivalrous they are, how gallant they are, uh, hashtag something to show solidarity, whatever. But I, you know my stance on this, all of that just doesn't work. Uh, I, however, I do feel I have a responsibility to discuss proper training and martial arts because as someone that knows about stuff that happened on the street, I grew up in a bad neighborhood, I constantly saw the police in action, I constantly saw street fights, I have a responsibility to talk about martial arts because this is what this channel is about and also I am someone that's heavily invested in self-defense and once again I have a responsibility to discuss the proper ways of training. So very recently uh, before all this happened I came out with a video called top 5 judo throws for self-defense and one of the biggest criteria that I took into consideration was that I do not want to hurt my aggressor because I do believe that everyone should go home safe and the aggressor should have learned his lesson because of humiliation and how they were controlled and because someone really took control of them that could have also uh, inflicted a lot of harm on them and yet they didn't should be a wake-up call to them to not do this stuff ever again. Uh, Unfortunately, this is not the case all the time, but uh, a lot of the time it is the case. Uh, they learn their lesson and they feel helpless and embarrassed and mentally weakened by the control and the lack of possibilities or the uh, just the way that they could not move anymore, no matter how strong they thought they were. And that's how martial arts should be used. Now, what happened recently was very tragic and it's something that... I cannot help but think that with proper training, so many problems would be solved and I'm going to discuss all of them. So the first one being with proper training, especially the special forces and the police, you just there's just no need for excessive force and desperate actions like putting out a weapon and uh, resorting to it and ending the suspect's life. So with proper training, I've seen videos all over the place. Someone like a police, uh, you know, uh, getting tangled and mingled in ground grappling with someone and they put them in like side control and they immediately escape, uh, you know, something an advanced white belt would not uh, let happen, which is really crazy. Someone that's uh, responsible for street safety and the community safety cannot hold someone down for two seconds in a side control is scary. Now, I saw videos, someone getting out of holds, etc. And then uh, they got on top of them. And this is where the policemen use their gun or a knife or a taser or whatever. Uh, with proper training, that would have never happened. They would have controlled them from the first till the last second until backup came or they have handled the arrest themselves. The second thing is, recently what happened was he had his shin on his neck, the side of his neck, for a very long time. Now, any white belt would know that if you, how do you say, like press the neck long enough, first of all, they will start to feel lightheaded, they pass out, and if you keep the pressure long enough, they would get killed. And this is what happened. Now, if you would know that when they pass out, you just leave it. Sometimes we need to let someone pass out in a street fight because we know or assess that they might retaliate but we just put them to sleep and that's it because when they wake up they would be very delirious they would not know what happened and that person kept the pressure for more than eight minutes that's why we have all this problem now and they strike me as someone that don't know anything about the human anatomy because when you go into jujitsu and judo you start to learn more about the anatomy than science class in general. For example, uh, the knee bar 
injures the knee uh, differently than a heel hook for example one targets the joint and one targets like the ligaments it's it's very complex but we tend to learn more about the human anatomy when we train these things for example a blood choke is different than a trachea choke a guillotine when you lift your wrists up it's gonna do different damage than a triangle choke so this is what happens strikes me as someone that doesn't know anything about training and you know they might be a hateful person i i'm not gonna go into that i'm gonna talk about training and that's the second benefit of proper training when you have proper training not only there's no need for excessive use of force and uh, the potential resorts for weapons and having a tragedy happen every time when the police interacts with someone that's resisting arrest but also when you have proper training the stuff that hero and henner always talk about uh, there's no excuse for someone to uh, how, uh, use excessive force i'll give you an example uh, let's say something happened like the video i i talked about i'm sure you can find it on gracie breakdown uh, that police that cannot hold someone down and eventually they pull out their gun and shoot the suspect if that happens again and the protocol of proper training was truly established then we know that that person is not fit to be a police is not fit to handle the streets and they would be weeded out the second thing is that uh, if someone is properly trained and still go out and commit uh, these heinous acts against potential suspect and you know causing a nationwide riot you would have to investigate them and see that you know hey you have proper training why did you do this then you would know that that person first of all is mentally unstable they are not fit to serve and they are they have anger management and violence problem and also they would be weeded out so the two situations whether they are uh unfit or they haven't received the proper training they would be weeded out because uh with proper training you would know and investigate what happens and you would know that okay that person did not handle the situation well so therefore they are uh unable to be put on the street again and the second is that someone that's very high ranked and they you know they had the proper training uh the police records all the training records etc and they still go out and commit these things first of all you investigated maybe the suspect is dangerous then yes maybe you had to resort to use weapons but uh, when you investigate and you see that there was no reason you would know that that person has a violence problem you would know that that person is mentally unstable uh, i cannot say hey you are you know discriminatory or you have a prejudice against this type of uh, race or group of people you just cannot do that you, you don't know what's going on in someone's head however you can assess their actions and you can say hey you have anger management problem hey you are way too violent you are basically a criminal you cannot be on the police force so with proper training you take out every single reason for someone to use excessive force that's the main main benefit of proper training if i'm properly trained i can control the situation and no one gets harmed and i can i'm not gonna say easily but uh possibly have more success with the arrest and two if i have mental problems even though i received proper training i have no excuse to use it and thus i will be not only uh tried and put into court for the crime that i had committed as a police officer but also you would set an example for others and you would weed out every bad uh, individual in the force and you would just keep the people that are properly trained that are truly there to quote unquote protect and serve and this is why training in martial arts is incredibly uh, important and not only that kano sensei discussed the intellectual int uh, education the moral education this one is very important the moral education and third the physical education now the moral education is very important because uh with the reform of japan jujitsu became like a practice for thugs they would go out and cause all these troubles and then 
Jigoro Kano says, hey, hey, wait. If you add morality to it, if you add like courtesy to it, chivalry, being gallant to this practice, it would become a very noble thing and it would help create a better society. And this is what it should be uh, applied to the police and the special forces and the army. Now, when people like, I'm, and I'm sorry to say this, like Gordon Ryan, who is a great champion, go out and say, people have this delusion about martial arts being about respect and being humbled. No, it's not. It's about nasty Brazilians going in and beating up people and showing they are better. That's basically training someone to become a bully. And if someone is just a bit has mental issues, you will create a criminal. And that's why I do not accept the behavior of someone like Gordon Ryan, a big champion with a a big following and platform saying that you know martial art is about bullying essentially this is what he's saying uh, i cannot uh you know tolerate it and i cannot and i have to discuss it because it's very dangerous the stuff he says look at what happened with rufino dos santos with the gracies um uh, all these things that had happened uh in the west even jean labelle yes he's a great champion but you know being happy with inflicting a lot of pain. Now, gladly, he didn't injure anyone, but, uh, you know, being a sadistic bastard, yes, it's fun, it's, it's, it's a laughing matter, but uh, someone can take it this the wrong way and go and, you know, inflict harm on someone else. And that's why the etiquette, the mental and moral education, as Kano Sensei puts it, is very important. It's not just the physical training. That's why it became from Jujutsu to Judo. It went from a gentle technique to gentle way, a gentle way of living. And with proper training, one last time I'll say this, with proper training, you'll weed out every bad individual and also you'll weed out every excuse to commit uh, excessive force when there was no need to. Please, I know you have a lot of things to say down below. I'm not going to discuss the intricacies of the situation, the hate, the discrimination, whatever. I have a responsibility to talk about martial arts in order to prevent this from happening again. And like I said, with proper training, even though you are a discriminatory person and a hateful person, you'll have no more excuse to do this because then you will be caught and you would be found out because... The level of training is so high that this kind of behavior would not be acceptable. Say, oh, he had to use it because they were ar resisting arrest. No, you would know that he could have handled the situation very well, yet he chose to do this. And that's why people like uh, him or her should not be on the force. This is very important. Uh, I salute and commend Henner and Hiron Gracie for not only training the police, but constantly talking about these things and I encourage you all to go and watch Gracie Breakdown and these specific videos. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.